Oh, baby. It's Review and Reviews. Hell yeah, it is, baby. I'm DJ Demers. I'm Mike Perkins. And it's another episode, and we're happy to have you. I'm always happy to see you. I'm happy to have the listeners here uh, with us in the room. <laughs> we got every listener who's ever so, listened to the show yeah, is in the room with us. They're right here now. right now. It's crowded. It's hot. I always feel like they are. They're with me in my everyday travels, everything I do. I'm always thinking about them. The reviewers are with me mm-hmm. in my heart and my soul and my mind. It's a beautiful sentiment. Right? Mm-hmm. And this is episode 42. Is it 42? It's 42 weeks, baby. I like 42. It's a good number. I it think is. of life, I think of multiples of seven a lot. It's kind of like an OCD thing, but oh, okay. like if I'm counting something, yeah. I'll be like, oh, I have to make sure this water's turned off and I'll hold my hand under it for seven seconds. But then sometimes that's not enough and I'll go to 14 or 21. Really? Sometimes I go as high as 42. So that's six times seven. Damn. That's right, it is. We got a mathematician <laughs> in the house. I mean, I don't like to. Yeah. I put one and one together on what you were saying, you know? The weirdest is when I count my thrust during sexual intercourse. <laughs> and I'm. <laughs> I can't come yet. I got to hit I gotta hit 14. Got to hit 21. It's true. It's bad luck. <laughs> can't be coming on the six. It'd be funny if you lose track and you're like, oh, wait, I need to, all oh, right, no, hold on, start over, zero, one, two, three. A weird way to start an episode, but it's real. That's who I am. I like the realness of it, mm-hmm. you know, because some some people maybe like they count their thrusts. That's what it's all about, ladies. You know, it's all about counting your thrusts. I don't know if that is what it's all about, but well, they it's should. what it's all about for me. Hey. You count your thrusts? I don't count the thrusts. I'm just happy to be thrusting. <laughs> <laughs> one thrust is good enough for me. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it. To, I'm in it to win I it. Stop counting after one. I stop counting after one. I'm like, I'm here. Yep, we're good. <laughs> Today's episode, we're partying, right? We're partying, babe. We're, we're moving a, from the thrust into the partying. But we're always having a good time. That's right. And what's more than having a good time than at good times at Davy Wayne's? That's a bar here. Where is it? West Ho- Hollywood. It's, it's uh, right here in Hollywood. It's right near Hollywood Boulevard. It uh, The exact address, if you want to look it up, is uh, 1611 North El Centro Ave in Los Angeles, California, 90028. Uh, right by Hollywood and Vine around that area. It's a speakeasy. Yeah, I've been here a couple times. It's cool. It's a cool spot. Mm-hmm. So not to give away the speakeasy feel of it, but you got to know when you walk in. You walk in, and it's like an old like garage feel, and there's a big fridge. Yeah. Is the door. You so walk through the fridge door. You walk through the fridge, you open it up, you walk in, and it's like an old, like, 70s style bar. Mm-hmm. You're in, like, an old 70s, like, panel wood. and like, Nice patio in the back. Yep, the patio. They mm-hmm. got food and stuff there, too. It's a cool little speakeasy kind of feel. There's a lot of speakeasies in L.A. Yeah. I feel. Is it really a speakeasy, though, if you can find it on Yelp? Like, it doesn't uh, feel secretive enough to, to deserve the title speakeasy. I guess. I think because, like, they don't really have signs pointing towards it. You know what I mean? So, like, if you know about it, you can Google it and search it, and people, mm-hmm. like, they have an Instagram account yeah, <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. I, from the street, you don't really see a sign for it anywhere. I think, True. I think there might be, like, one sign that says just Good Times David Wayne's, you know, but you have to, like, kind of go, like, through a fence and shit to get to it. When my friend, my friend came to visit me from Canada last year for one of my buddies' bachelor parties, they all came down, yeah. and we went there, and it feels like L.A. when you're in there. Lots of beautiful women, good music. It's, yep. It's an L.A. bar. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. It feels like you're in that 70s show, because it's the 70s theme. You know, True. And they play that type of music, where it's like, hanging they? out down the street, the same, same old thing, thing we, we did, did last week. week. Not, Not a thing, thing to, to do, do, but review the Re- reviews. Nice. That all night. <laughs> I love Wisconsin. Is it? I love her. Hello, Wisconsin. Um, yeah. I loved that show. I think though. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. Yeah. I used to love watching that show. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a good show. So, good times at Davy Wayne's. Good times, baby. How many uh, reviews so are there overall? It had three. <laughs> That's so funny that we just casually sang the theme song <laughs> for that 70s show. Well, back to the episode. Back to the good times. Uh, so it's got three and a half stars out of 
uh, 1,284 reviews. Wow, that's a lot of reviews. It's a lot. Yeah, and a three and a half is, uh, I mean, it's kind of like average, I guess. I don't know. That's not you think? great. That's right on the cusp of me not wanting to go to a place. Yeah, you know, it's not like the four and five star kind of thing where it's like you need to go to this place. When I said it feels like you're in L.A., that's the good and the bad. Like yes. when I went with my friend, since we were like six dudes, we waited in line. I hate waiting in line. I don't even go to bars anymore. I I'm a comedian. I'm we're doing shows at night. I'm not. Yeah. So this was like a break from my regular routine. Uh -huh. And when we were standing out there waiting in line, I was like, holy shit, because they're letting in beautiful ladies. Right. I get yep. it. So we were waiting for like 40 minutes. Yeah. But it's my buddy's bachelor party. And then we got in there and it's packed. So you're waiting a bit. It's for crazy drink. packed. So yeah. it's cool. Cause you're like, yeah, L.A. But you're also like. I don't want to yeah. put up with this shit too much. Was longer. it a weekend you went? You said was it? Yeah, yeah. That's why it's packed. Yeah, yeah. I've been on like a Wednesday night or something where like you kind of get right in, but it's still packed like to the brim. Yeah, you know. But it's not like you're not waiting outside for. And a lot of people do say that they wait outside for like an hour just to like get denied <laughs> of getting in. Yeah, you know, it's insane. It's so funny. I feel that same way with like when people because all we do is just go to. We're either doing shows or we're busy doing something else or like. But when people come to visit me and they say like, "What's a good spot to go to?" I'm like. I mean, just no comedy clubs or yeah. like I know a place like this that someone took me before you know like I'm always like I don't know what to do let's go get a cupcake at the cupcake ATM <laughs> <laughs> you know like I don't know like I love sprinkles <laughs> yes I do yes I do yeah thanks for bringing me here Mike this yeah. is a real Hollywood experience <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But I always like, I'm like comedy clubs. That's all I, that's all I know. And that's yeah. the only place if I have free time, I'll go there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but if you have free time, go to Good Time at Davy Wayne's. Because mm -hmm. we're about to dive right into it, DJ. This is our first review. Okay. Uh, this is from Dana S. from Canoga Park, California. Mm. Gave it a three-star review on 10-9-2014. And uh, I think it's a he. Uh, it might be a she. I think it's a she. It's a she. Okay. Dana. Uh, Dana from Canoke Park. She says, food is very disappointing. I got a grilled cheese sandwich that was meant for a toddler. It tasted burnt, sad face. They only sell snow cones from 8 p.m. and on. What the fuck? It's hot right now. I want a fucking snow cone right now. Come on for the, come for the atmosphere and drinks only. I expected better. And then she showed a picture of the little grilled cheese uh, type thing. I have some news for you, Dana S. from Canoga Park. Uh -huh. All grilled cheese sandwiches are meant for toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That it's, is a pretty small grilled cheese that you're looking at this picture right now. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, I love a grilled cheese as much as the next person. It's a simple delight. Yeah. But you can't, it's... It's for kids. Yeah, it's a kid's yeah. food. And but that, that looks like a shitty ass McMuffin. She's got a point. <laughs> it does. It's all, sir. it's a circle. Yeah. yeah. Grilled cheese shouldn't be a circle. You know? Yeah, but you also shouldn't be going to a bar or a speakeasy, rather, with the intention of getting great food. That's exactly. not what they're known for. Yeah. And what's funny, too, is she's, like, saying how, like, it's meant for a toddler. And then she's yelling, like, I want a snow cone now. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's, like, Veruca she Salt from, like, uh, fucking um, Willy Wonka. I just watched that three nights ago. I'd never really? seen it before. The original. It's insane. Great yeah. movie. I want, a, I, want a, I want a goose now. I want a goose now. Or whatever. And I didn't realize Veruca Salt was the name of a character in that because there was a band called Veruca Salt in the 90s. With really? two girls. Yeah. No shit. Did you ever? Did you know that song no. by them? No, I never knew the song. Ruka Salt. Yeah. Um, it was uh, oh my God, what was the big song they had? Were they a Canadian band or were they? They must have been. Anytime yeah. I mention, oh no, they're from Chicago. Oh no way. But anytime I mention a band and people don't know it, I'm like, they must have been just filling up the Canadian content uh, yeah, requirement yeah. in Canada. Uh -huh. But no, they uh, they had a big song called Volcano Girls. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, this girl is a toddler, and her picture has a further <laughs> caption on it, and it, she, it says, <laughs> look how fucking tiny this shit is, and it just <laughs> tastes burnt. <laughs> That's so funny. Wow. Uh, yeah, she does sound like Veruca Salt. Yeah. It's hot right now. It's hot right now. I want a snow cone now. <laughs> I want a fucking snow cone. Okay, here's the next review, Mike. Moving on from Veruca Salt, not the band. <laughs> The character. Not that volcano Wonka. girl that we all know and love. <laughs> <laughs> from Chicago, Illinois, of course. <laughs> the next review is from Jackie N. One star review on January 15th, 2018. And Jackie N. said, 
went there and had fun, then went then went back an hour later, and they were so rude, I will never go back. The bouncer told my husband to go fuck himself and wouldn't <laughs> let us in. I have never been more embarrassed and appalled in my life. The sad thing is, I love their drinks, but it doesn't matter. I will never be back there, ever. <laughs> that is the sad thing, Jackie, that you love their drinks. That's really sad oh man that's so funny go fuck yourself i wonder what the husband said for the bouncer to use such he appalling language he might even complain about the grilled cheese or the snow i cones. want a grilled cheese now go fuck yourself hubby <laughs> wow people are using some language here right i mean i guess the 70s like i don't know it's that 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 theme of it, you know? Maybe. Were like people when, swearing more in the I 70s? I guess when parents would yell at you and beat you and shit in the 70s, right? The good know. old days. We're 80s babies, but I remember like, you know, like what's his name? Uh, Bill Burr, his efforts for family. Efforts that takes place family. in like 76 or something, right? Yeah. All the parents were just figuring out how to deal with their kids. It was like post-World War II parents. Like yeah. The baby boomers figuring out how to not hit their kids. So they're like, maybe if I just tell them to fuck off, that's yeah. a nice sweet spot. Plus like, yeah, like the Vietnam like era and stuff too. Like mm-hmm. 60, when was Vietnam? 68, 69? I think so. Something yeah. Like that. Early 70s, if not late 60s. Yeah. But I remember yeah. when Winnie's brother got drafted and then... Uh, is that Wonder away. Years? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> she was never the same after that, but I mean, you know. wow, it was twenty years. It was from nineteen fifty five to nineteen seventy five. That long for the Vietnam War? Yeah. I should have remembered that. I did a speech on the Vietnam War Holy in sixth shit. grade. Shit. Yeah. It started in fifty five. Yeah. I mean, anybody I coming back from the war, this is a quite a segue, but they were, they were just coming back and expected to live a normal life after that. Oh, like, yeah. oh, I'm just gonna go go work as a factory worker or plumber after i just witnessed all these atrocities like yeah of course you're gonna tell your kid to fuck off yeah and that's what it was like back in like you know because they're coming back the kids are like you're like 18 and like 75 and stuff and you're just like well fuck that you're like yeah wow didn't think we'd uh delve into the vietnam war but (laughs) what a (laughs) what a segue into that huh (laughs) Sounds like a lot of people are having bad times. This, at Navy Wayne. <laughs> this episode went from Willy Wonka to the Vietnam War. We are like all over the spectrum of just. But the Viet or not the Vietnam War. Willy Wonka is pretty dark too. It is a dark movie. Yeah, I didn't see the new one with Johnny Depp. It seems like they probably went a that little one's too fucking creepy and crazy. They tried though. to go too hard on the the heavy stuff. They went I believe, too creepy. Right? No, it wasn't even like heavy stuff. It was more just like creepy. Like mm. he was just like, "Hello, little boys and girls." You know, it was just like, mm. what the "Fuck's happening." There was that scene in Willy Wonka uh, when he when they're going through the tunnel and you just see him just going nuts like uh, Gene Wilder. Yeah, that was like a really like. Not ahead of its time, not those words, but like I think it was you know, of the time. Of the time because where it was that's just weird. A, that's the psychedelic era, you know, yeah. everybody peace and love, tripping yeah. on acid and Which all. Which is that. what Davy Waynes gives you that feel of like that that era of like psychedelics and shit, you know what I mean? That's true. It yeah. does. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So I guess these aren't weird segues because I just looked it up. Willy Wonka came out in seventy one, Vietnam War ended in seventy five. This is yeah. all tied in. Yeah. If anything, we're like we're we're going a deep with it. Deep, yeah, this yeah. Is a deep dive within the walls of Davy Wayne's is the pain of the Vietnam War and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Wow, <sighs> shit, man! You could write an essay on this. This man. is a thesis that we're putting together this here. This is it. We're gonna get this published pretty soon. If you guys want to check it out. Uh, speaking of checking out, how about our next review? Uh, is coming from Monsieur I from Los Angeles. What a name! His picture, holy shit, going into war is a monkey that looks like Napoleon. <laughs> True. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> what a picture! That's a great picture. It is an awesome picture. Uh, Monsieur I from Los Angeles. He gave it a five star review on eight nine nineteen. Pretty recent. He said. If I were a drug kingpin, my bedroom would have had a solid gold chair, a 20-foot circular bed with a disco ball above, and an old beat-up refrigerator in the corner. Thank you, Mind Chair. <laughs> is there, uh, I know there's a refrigerator door you have to go through, but is there a 20-foot circular bed in Davy Wayne's? I don't think so, but I think this, this is where that guy went from walking through the fridge, just brought his memory to that, you know, the disco ball and everything. That There's sounds like a pretty sweet bedroom. Yeah. The couches in Davy Wayne's are like, you know, that 70s uh, kind of like material. That's true. You know, so they might have a bed somewhere. If there's a different room, so maybe there's like a bed where you can all just sit down and not fuck in, I guess. I don't know. If people fuck in the bar, like on the bed. I don't think there's a bed. 
Yeah, I don't know. I Maybe never it's got a that special far. room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I've had sex. I mean, I'm saying, like, I'm not. Like, I never got that far. <laughs> I never got that far. What happens in a bed? But, uh. Wow. Okay. Well, that sounds like a pretty cool bedroom, I'm unsure. Whether or not that actually is in Davy Wind, I support your bedroom decor. Yeah. And I hope that you achieve that. Yeah. Um, and okay. Yeah. And the next review <laughs> is from Anmi V. And, uh, you know, she's got a cute profile picture. She looks like a she looks like a cute girl. Oh, there she is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and me, v. she's got two friends. She's elite. And me, what a name too. And me, it's not Annie. It's not Amy. It's and a me. mixture of both. Yeah. And me, and me, v. That she's Asian, possibly uh-huh. Vietnamese. Wow, this is all coming back. Maybe the V stands for Vietnam. <laughs> and and me, v. <laughs> Maybe. You know, when I was in art class, we had to learn to use clay when I was in 10th grade, and we had to make like a figurine or anything we wanted out of clay. Yeah. So I made this superhero, a cape and everything, and like standing tall, like Superman or something. Yeah, yeah. But then I didn't know how to use the clay well, so his arms fell off, and then his legs fell off. (laughs) But I didn't want to get a failing grade on it, Uh so I thought I was really smart. So I put a big V on his chest, Uh and I called him Vietnam Man, and I said that... (laughs) The arms and legs being missing were symbolic for what he went through, and he was kind of an anti-hero. And I ended up getting a decent grade on it. I think my teacher knew I was full of shit, but still was like, well, oh you tried. Oh, my God. Yeah. Holy shit. I know. The things we think we're getting away with <laughs> when we're in... Vietnam, man. It's Vietnam, man. That's a new Marvel movie coming out, I think, next year. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a bomb for sure. Nobody's Check out going. Disney Plus for the new Vietnam Man series. Um, and Amni V is uh, elite, as I said, and her description of herself on Yelp is belly rubber extraordinaire. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I, I misread that at first. I thought she meant like belly and then rubber, like the material extraordinaire. I didn't know what that meant. Uh-huh. But she means she rubs bellies. She, she rubs could, bellies. I yeah. get it. Now. Belly rubber extraordinaire. Okay. Well, Amni V. I she, think that's only for dogs, guys. I think. <laughs> I think it's only... I don't know. She's not specific. I mean, I don't know. One star review on December 29th, 2015. She said, After last night, I will never be back. Started out with a Moscow mule from the prompt. And, oh, started out with a Moscow mule from the prompt and awesome bartender to the left. But when we returned, the other bartender, Daniel, with a brown mustache beard combo, was already yelling about some other patrons of the bar, cursing and saying they should leave the establishment if they weren't happy. No chill. It was just terrible. You go to the bar to have a great time, not listen to some messy bartender. Then my friend was worried the poor guy didn't get paid for a drink after seeing another guy take his drink and swiftly walk away. She told the bartender, and he asks rudely, Do you work here? Let me do my fucking job. Wow. (laughs) A well-intended act was received very poorly. Then, when we complained, he taunted us, cheersing my drink and pounding a shot, saying, What are you going to do? Are you going to write a Yelp review? You're goddamn right I am. (laughs) Too long, didn't read. Terrible service, long wait. Wow. These bartenders, what the fuck you going to do about it? He was drunk for sure. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because she wrote this on December 29th, and it was the night before, she said. So December 28th, that's like, it's not quite New Year's Eve yet, but when people are starting to unwind and and let loose, we got ourselves a drunk bartender. Wow, yeah. (laughs) What are you going to do, write a Yelp review? (laughs) You You goddamn right I am. (laughs) (laughs) And me V. And me V, dropping it down, yeah. Oh, my God. That guy ain't getting a belly rub. Oh, no, he's not. (laughs) He's not getting any, any rubs at all. They might rub him out, you know? So that sounds might, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we're about like, you know, whack them. Oh, but yeah. is rubbing them out a term for whacking? Yeah. Really? Rub them out, yeah. Whacking them off? Whacking also is a... <laughs> whacking <laughs> them off, rubbing them out. Sexy term for... I don't the, like how similar the terms are to sexual acts. You could really misconstrue what your boss wants you to do to that guy, you know? Yeah, right. Well, hey, Mike, I want to make sure by the end of the day today, I want you to rub that guy out. Like, boss, I'm going to need you to be a bit clearer here on what you want me to do. I jerked off Tony Two-Tone. What are you talking about? <laughs> I jerked him off. <laughs> wow. I love that he cheers her, too, all sarcastic. Yeah, getting right? Drunk. What are you so going to do? What are you going to do, right? Yelp review? Go ahead. Bro. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a grilled cheese. I love right. that you described his look and said, with a brown mustache beard combo. Yeah. It's just a beard, isn't it? I guess some people do have like a more, the mustache is like 3D version of the beard. You know what I mean? Like it, pr- it's more prominent. It's, it's more like it's deeper. It's more full, and then it's maybe it's more dastardly too. Sometimes you know it's coming out. I gotcha. You know, 
Okay. Like the handlebar, like you know, like true, the handlebar true. mustache. But she would have said handlebar, no? She would have said handlebar, yeah. You would think. Who knows? You know what I mean? But she wrote that goddamn Yelp review. <laughs> uh, our next one is coming from Mira C from Minneapolis, Minnesota. She gave it a one star review on August 11th, 2019. She said, No shorts after 8 p.m. Are male kneecaps that offensive? They turn us away because my friend was wearing a nice khaki shorts. Even though us ladies can wear skirts and shorts, when a man bears his kneecaps, there is no mercy here. Do not recommend. Free the knees, baby. Free, free the, the knees. Free the knees. <laughs> free the knees. We got to start a revolution. <laughs> I will say, when I was in college and stuff, uh-huh. I wore shorts to the bar the odd time. Yeah? It's not a good look. It's not. You shouldn't be wearing shorts to the bar. Yeah. I never wear shorts. I'm not a shorts guy. No? No. I'm wearing shorts right now. Yeah. I don't wear shorts to a bar. I don't wear shorts on stage. Yeah. And I don't wear shorts on an airplane. Really? Or Why? traveling anywhere, like on a train or wherever. Why no shorts traveling? What's that? It's, yeah, I don't want to look beside me and see the knees of some dude either. I'm with oh, okay. Davy Wayne on this one. Yeah? I just, I don't want to see it. Yeah. And also for my own personal sake, it's just easier to wear a t-shirt and pants and regulate my temperature that way. But if your knees and feet and legs start getting cold on an airplane, that is true. Yeah. It's just a weirdly intimate thing to yeah. show your like legs to somebody on a plane. I don't yeah. know. I love that she's behind this movement of uh, you know free the knees because she was like, my friend's wearing this nice khaki shorts. Why can't he get in? Defending her friend. But I like get back it. Back in the 70s, like if that's the vibe, they used to have those kind of shorts, didn't they? It was all like khakis and shit. I think beyond the decor, this bar doesn't give a shit about the 70s. Yeah, I guess You know so. what I mean? They don't want guys coming in in khaki shorts. I don't care how nice they are. Yeah. I kind of support them in this. Yeah? I know it seems discriminatory, but uh-huh. you're trying to... You want sexy ladies coming to your bar? That's true. You don't want you, some guy... Because some shorts are too short, too. They're like true. too much above the knee, and you're like, all right. Yeah, the free ha- the, the knee. The hairy legs yeah, coming out. Don't you know? free the thigh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe just have like old school, like 90s, like just ripped at the knees pants. <laughs> so yeah, those are, so your knees, those are in style so right now. Are they? They're coming back? Mm hmm. I think I've seen a lot of them. Wow. I refuse to buy ripped jeans. I'm like, yeah. I'll let them rip naturally through the day to day living yeah. that I'm going to do. I'm living a hard life where my knees are bound to get ripped, <laughs> but I'm not buying them like that. <laughs> That's okay. so fun. <laughs> this next review is from Oliver C. It's in the unrecommended section. I feel like we haven't jumped into the unrecommended we in, a while. in a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're back though, baby. We're back in the unrecommended. Oh, yeah, they don't. Yelp want you doesn't to see want it. you to see these. Yelp doesn't want me to see anything anymore because, like we know from before, they kicked me off. They kicked you off. But I'm still back looking at these unrecommended. I think it's because your profile picture you were wearing shorts, right? That's um, it. Was the knees? It was definitely the knees. <laughs> okay, so this is a guy who left. So you have to go all the way to the bottom and click on the little gray thing that says unrecommended reviews uh-huh. if you want to see these ones. This is a one star review from Oliver C. And this guy uses the biggest words I've ever seen. As you know, I'm a fan of big words. You are a big fan. Yeah. I don't even know all of these. So the question Adalian, if you will. Uh, sesquipedalian. S- sesquipedalian. Yeah. Sesqu- you get it. Which I actually <laughs> learned I use incorrectly. It's an adjective. It's not. I'm not a sesquipedalian. I I behave in a sesquipedalian manner. Wow. Yeah, you did okay. correctly. Yeah. Sesquid- <clears throat> I can't even say the word, so you're great. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Oliver C. One star review, June seventh, two thousand nineteen. Their omnipotent perfidy transcended preconceived notions of how men- mendacious an establishment can be. It illuminate. It illuminated quiescent. No, quiescent, quiescent understandings of the darkest depths of humanity preterite of deployment to afghanistan all potential visitors should eschew their services nothing can palliate their transgressions and i fervently advise against going to this shithole (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what just happened in any of those words i do understand what he was saying because he ended on shithole Uh uh-huh yeah that was a good way to bring it all together just to be like don't go to this place so what he's trying to say is that Quiescent is the word I was trying to say. Quiescent. So what does quiescent mean? In a state or period of inactivity or dormancy. Oh, okay. It illuminated quiescent understandings of the darkest depths of humanity of deployment. Quiescent. Quiescent. Yeah. So he's saying that their omnipotent perfidy, perfidy means like shittiness Uh from what I know. Yeah. So they're all consuming shittiness, transcended preconceived notion, notions of how bad an establishment can be. He's just 
using big words to let you know this place sucks. Yeah. But don't go there. <laughs> and eschew their services. I don't know why this was unrecommended. Yelp showing discrimination against geniuses. Right? I know. Look at that shit. Hmm. Fucking Yelp. And his uh, his picture looks like it would say, like, Boys like Mexico or something. Yeah, boys like Mexico, it, and then it cuts off. Boys yeah. like Mexico. Something like that. Hmm. Yeah, don't go to the shithole. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. As we've established in other episodes, when a bar wrongs you, when like a bartender or bouncer like does something bad to you at a bar, it upsets you. So, oh, yeah. Especially if you're drunk. Like, yep. I could imagine writing a terrible... And you hold drunk. grudges, and this guy, he that's a big grudge for him to like drop these words on... You know, he's mm-hmm. dropping bombs on him, like, you know, like de- deployments to Afghanistan. Yeah, that was a weird reference. Right? Yeah. Is that because were we in Afghanistan in the 70s, too? Is that why? There was activity in Afghanistan in the 70s. I think it was more Russia than America, but who knows? Those are all so intertwined. You know how, like, yeah. when uh, Osama bin Laden orchestrated 9-11, we ended up realizing that we were supplying him his weapons in his 80s. He was uh-huh. actually, like, a U.S. ally in the 80s, and then he ended up... All I know is that all the wars that have gone on, even now with what's going on in Iran and Iraq, it's like all of a sudden we're like kind of on Iraq's side and they're bombing the U.S. consulate in Iraq. I don't know. I don't know enough about politics, but I know that it's all... I don't know what's happening either. It's all so swirling that you're like, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? Yeah. I don't know. You know who are the good guys? All the reviewsters. (laughs) They're the good guys. We (laughs) went from Willy Wonka, Vietnam War, to what's going on right now, to this guy being quiescent, quiescent, quiescent quiescent yeah. in understanding mm-hmm. and this next guy that's unrecommended has a good quiescent understanding his name is jeff p from pasadena california he gave it a four star on march 2nd 2016 he said my wife and i he- went here last night to make up for our marriage issues and it did the trick <laughs> we saw a few bands great drinks had to get a hotel room for the missus and i wink wink <laughs> <laughs> Go get him, Jeff. He was definitely counting the thrust, I'll tell you that much. One, two, two three, four, five, five six, six, seven. And go. Uh, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two. Wow. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's about as good of a review as you can write for a bar. Right. Solving marriage issues. Marriage issues. They were about to get divorced, and they went to good times at Davy Wayne's. And brought back their memories from the 70s. Jeff P. looks like he might have been around in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm aging him. He might have been a child in the 70s. But hey, he was still watching some Willy Wonka and stuff. You know what I mean? That's right, he was. Yep. Okay. Well, good for you, Jeff. Yeah. Happy for you and the missus. Yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> Final review. And once again, Final. unrecommended. It's from David C. Four star, or Five star review, December 20th, 2016. He said, I have a great night every time I make it out here, I think. I love this review so much because <laughs> he has no idea. And his picture looks like when Facebook first came out and uh-huh. I joined in 2009, yeah. his picture looks like what all my Facebook pictures look like. Right. It's him and a buddy. It's, it's I can't blow it up because he's unrecommended, but it yeah. looks like he's drunk at a bar somewhere. They got their arms around each other. Yeah, drinks in hand. That you know. was the original Facebook for me, just like posting on someone's wall. Like, last night was crazy, I yep. think. Yeah, like you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I have a great time every time I make it out here. I, I think. think. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. Those last two reviews, I don't understand why any of those were unrecommended. I know, right? But those final two were what you want to see as a bar. Yeah. Solving marriage issues, helping young guys have blackout drunk nights. Yep. That's what it's all about, baby. It's all about the good times. That Davey wins. And we always have good times. That's the end of the episode. You're the king of the segue. You know I am. Willy Wonka. (laughs) (laughs) They call me Willy Wonka on those segues, baby. Oh, my God. I'm going to rewatch, or not rewatch, I'm going to watch the the Johnny Depp one. I really enjoyed the original. I don't know how I went so long without watching it. Yeah. I'm going to get around to Back to the Future someday, Mike. You watch. We'll talk about it eventually. It'll be good. What was your favorite review? Uh, Man, my favorite one. I love the Pasadena guy that we just talked about, Uh, Jeff P. When he's, my wife and I went here to fix marriage issues. That's what it's all about, man. It's mm-hmm. all about having good times, mm-hmm. you know? And maybe, like, you know, you share a couple good, you know, share a couple nice conversations with the girl and then get in the hotel room after. I mean, that's a win, you know? Wink. 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 That's my boy, Jeff P. I like that one as well. I think my yep. favorite was probably Veruca Salt in the beginning, Dana. Oh, okay. I like Got her. a grilled cheese sandwich. 
Her caption made me laugh. Look how fucking tiny this shit is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I just remembered the Veruca Salt, Salt song. It popped up into my head. Leave me right here, because I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> That's it. I love it. That's so funny. <laughs> it's a great song. <laughs> Shout out to Veruca Salt. Veruca, baby. Bring, bringing back memories of my youth. I love back it. Back when I had a good time. I think. I think I had a good time. <laughs> Overall, I uh, I like these reviews a lot. You had the good, you had the bad, you had the saved marriages, you had the drunk bartenders, you had yep. the shitty grilled cheese sandwiches. Yep. Really ran the gamut. I'm giving it five. You giving it a five? I'm giving it five. My man. I'm going to give it... Mm, I'm going to go with this girl. I'm going to give it... Uh, Five fucking tiny grilled cheese sandwiches. Goddamn right. I'm going to go right with you, man. I'm going to give it a five, too. Mm -hmm. Because I feel good about this place. I like it. I had a good time there when I went there a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to give it five kneecaps. I'm going to give it five kneecaps. Gross. Five, (laughs) just five, (laughs) just out, manly kneecaps. Just hair all over the kneecaps. Just hairy, but Coming down from those khakis. Just living it, bro. You know, just five beautiful kneecaps. Hashtag Free the knee. Free the knees, baby. Well, that is the end of the episode. We hope you had a good time, not at Davy Wayne, but a good time at the reviews of Good Times at Davy Wayne. We're shaking. We're shaking that hand's it. there. We're shaking it. I'm DJ Demers. I'm Mike Perkins. We'll catch you next week here on Review and Reviews. Whoop, whoop. Review.